My name is Lydia Hubble. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I am working uh, as a leader right now of a Tennessee JAM, stands for Judicial Accountability Movement. I have not seen my little girl, Delari Gadare. She's seven years old. I have not had any contact with her at all for um, nine and a half months, well, almost nine and a half months as of today. And um, we're trying to get organized and, and make some changes and because the, the uh, there's just a, it's just I thought my story was bad and I mean the some of the other stories are heart-wrenching but I'll tell you I'm walking around with a big hole in my heart and I'm sure my little girl is too because um, I was a full-time mom and we were we were very close and uh, it says this kind of cruelty has to stop but anyway uh, have <laughs> part of my therapy music therapy I have a ukulele. It's a tenor ukulele. Uh, I got it cheap off Amazon. It was, it was a bundle with a, um, had a case and a tuner and all this stuff. And uh, I really feel like music's important. I feel like this this is a civil rights movement. That's what I said in, in my custody trial. I said this this is a civil rights case. And parental rights have just been so eroded. Over, even, the law is very clear. The law is very clear in Tennessee about parental rights and about how um, uh, parents are supposed to have enjoy maximum parenting time. But uh, Judge Sheila Calloway, Davidson County juvenile judge, doesn't think she has to follow the law. And uh, that's stuff like that's going on all over the place. But anyway, this is a, this is a protest song. It's an old... Um, spiritual I guess and then of course in the in the you know the, the black civil rights movement for in the 60s they used a lot of you know freedom 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 but um you know it music was important in in their crusade and and it is for the parents this is this is for the parents rights and the children's rights because my little girl did not she absolutely did nothing to to deserve to be treated like this and I, I mean she had not a care in the world before uh, I got dragged to court, and um, anyway, it, it it it's it, it's sad and it's outrageous that that the country's betraying families like this, and I really think the devil's behind it. But um, anyway, so uh, on Facebook, there's a, a group Tennessee capital J A M, and then parentheses it's Judicial Accountability Movement. And if you're in Tennessee, or even if you're not, if you just want to follow what we're doing. Um, join us there because it's going to really take a the, this corruption has been going on for a long time and it's pretty deeply rooted and it's going to take a while to 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 um, set things right and uh, maintain and um, restore and maintain the integrity of the judicial system and we need we need people to, to band together so please please join us but anyway this is um, the song was um, Odetta uh, uh, on YouTube it was Odetta it was a spiritual tr trilogy. It was Oh Freedom and something else. And then the, the last song in the trilogy was I'm on my way and I won't turn back. And I've turned it to change some of the words around. So I'm calling it We're on our way and we won't turn back. So, um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's good for me. It feels good to sing it. And, and, um, I hope I hope you like it and I hope you sing it and I hope it moves moves your spirit because we're we're really our country's really in big trouble and nobody's gonna fix it but the people and uh, they say that justice won't prevail until the unaffected or as outrageous as, as the affected or something like that but I had no idea till I was affected I had no idea this went on. And every time I hear somebody else's story, I, I get more and more outraged that that are the people, the people are the ones who are supposed to be running this country. But yeah, we're the we're the, the masters, and those people we put in positions of authority are they're our servants, and we've we've got to keep them in line. So anyway, uh, this is 2016. We're this is Mar Easter Easter. So remember, we've got to remember, um, thank Jesus for, for all he's done. And he's 
this has really been a, a faith building uh, and a character building experience for me. I've been in this court process for like two years. It's been horrible, but um, it's it's going on everywhere and um, children's children's lives parents lives are just being ruined I mean the families are just devastated I mean it's it's got a ripple effect because you think you know you you what parent thinks they have the right to take the other parent child you know child away from the other parent and it, you're, you're also taking them away from from their community from their extended family and that's not right people and if people are um, a lot of it's the people's fault, but as far as you know, these what takes you to court, but but CPS, DCS, you know, the state is going in and, and stealing children, and the taxpayers are paying for it. So this is just it's just a huge problem, and I hope you look into it if you don't already know about it. You probably already know about it because you probably got, got my link saying go here and I'm gonna have to say okay the song starts at 620 okay we're on our way A performer and I don't I mess up and um, I just messed up and I'm not gonna record this whole thing so I'm gonna start over again where was I at the if the devil if the devil don't like it to worry about dropping it. I drop my pick a lot. Okay, so that's a little bit of the story. That's a song. And now since I messed it up so bad, I'm going to do one just the song. But, and, you know, I, I volunteered to be a leader because I'm, I'm like, where, you know, where where's the leader? Where's somebody pulling people together? And um, I, I wasn't really finding anybody doing that. And, um, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not a performer. I, I just got my ukulele for Christmas for my brother. So, um, but but I do feel like music's powerful and it's, it's very important to me. The writing, expressing myself, and just the playing, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I got copies of, of some orders the other day that were just, ugh, I just, Sarah Reist is the attorney who is making my life hell. 
And uh, <clears throat> and Judge Calloway signs off on everything she does. I was pro se for, well, and yeah, I'm, I still am. Um, there's a fraudulently obtained order of protection I just hired an attorney to get rid of. That's why I haven't seen my daughter at all. But um, anyway, so I, I, get, I get these. And, and it, my experience, I, I sort of feel like I've got some post-traumatic stress you know, I, I like a, it's like if somebody knocks on my door, I'm wondering is somebody, you know, coming to haul me off to jail. And when I check my mail, I don't look forward to getting my mail. I'm, I'm like, I just, I, I, I hope there's not something in there, more false allegations or more, more people charging me court costs for, uh, for, for this whole nightmare. All it's been is abuse of my child and of me. And they they want me to help pay for it, and, and I'm going through an appeal right now. And uh, so, but anyway, it's 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 bad, and and I just I'm so thankful to God that it's not worse than it, and it might get worse, but, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as worse as what some people have gone through. Because some people have had their parental rights totally terminated by the state for no good reason, and and de we call it. Department of Children's Services here, people call it Child Protective Services, whoever in your state is supposed, supposed to be looking out for, for children, abused and neglected children, they will go after your children for almost nothing. And I, did, I didn't know that one good thing about my experience and one thing I thank God for is that now I know and I can do something about it and I can't fix everything myself, but, but by God, I'm going to do what I can to help the families in America because it's only going to get worse. And my little girl, I don't want her to be at risk of going through as a parent, what I've gone through with her. It's bad enough. She's gone through it as a child. And I just, I just urge everybody to, to join, um, you know, if, even if you're not in Tennessee, well, I've got a, a Facebook group called My My Darling Delara. I had to change the name of it. It was Free Delara Gadare, but uh, Sarah Rice and, uh, and the judge felt like, oh, well, that might that might hurt Delara's feelings because one of her seven year old friends at school might go online and they might see Free Delara and they might think her why why is, does she need to be free? Oh, maybe somebody's keeping her captive. Oh, maybe they shouldn't be doing that. And, but somehow that it might make Delara feel bad because somebody, I, I might say something online. To it, it just, it doesn't make sense. She is in pain right now, not because of something that might possibly in some, you know, very remote possibility, maybe, maybe on some bizarro world, she might somehow be hurt by me speaking out for her. And then ignore the actual trauma they're subjecting her to. That's, that's the kind, it's, it's like being in the twilight zone. Nothing, nothing makes sense. But anyway, so I had to change, and I'm like, well, I, I like that, free to Larga Right now, she's not with her mom. She's not free. She's not free to contact me in any way. So I want her to be free. And I thought, well, that's a good name for this Facebook group because right now it's a verb. I want, I want us to free her so she can get her life back and get her, you know, her relationships, get back to church and her friends and her neighbors and her pets and her brother and sister and, you know, get, get her life back. And, um, and then when, when she does get her life back, it, it'll be an adjective. She's free. She's free to Laura. And, um, and I had that on YouTube and I had it on, you know, my Facebook group <laughs> and they made me change that. And I'm like, this is really a far stretch of infringements of, on my right to, to freedom of speech and expression. And it has nothing whatsoever to do with the best interest of the child. And Judge Sheila Calloway, uh, just last month, she was, she's only been uh, the juvenile court judge for a year and a half, 
But just last month, she got a um, appeals court opinion that she had abused her discretion because she, you know, she said like, oh, that's, just, they brought, it was about legal fees or something. And, and whoever had to appeal this, the lawyer said, well, what you're doing is against the law. And she says, well, I think it's a discretionary issue. And the appeals court said, well, you've got discretion, but you also have to apply sound legal principles. You, you, it, you've got to follow the law. And she, she, so I'm, gl I'm glad, I'm glad they said she's abused her discretion. And the, her, the oath she made, and it's on YouTube, Judge Sheila Calloway, swearing in ceremony. She had this big, it looked like it was at a big church or something, and um, big, big production. And she made such a big deal out of it being the day that was, it was the anniversary of the march, the Civil Rights Movement, the March on Washington. It was 1963, but it was the, whatever day she got sworn in. And she's like, <clears throat> you know, like, oh, that's so significant. I've never, and I, I was divorced like 12 years ago. I went through a divorce. I went through a custody battle. Nobody ever tried to keep me from seeing my, ch my children at all. That's, that's horrible. And I don't think anybody broke the law. I think everything was as fair as it could have been done, even though I felt like I lost and my ex-husband thought he lost. But the kids won because they had both parents in their life pretty much whenever they wanted to. Which is what I want. I, I did want that. But, um, uh, so in my, in my yeah, she, so they're swearing in ceremony. She, Judge Calloway, she swears to uphold the, uh, support, support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of, of Tennessee. And I think she says, to administer justice without respect of persons to the best of her ability so help her God. I think she even swore on the Bible. And I think she's even supposed to be a Christian. I told her in court <laughs> that she, you know, she's, you know, Christian, true religion. You know, you're supposed to keep yourself unspotted from the world and, you know, look after uh, widows and orphans. And I told her in court, I said, you know, there's, there's several people in here claiming to be Christians. They have not kept themselves unspotted from the world. And I may not be a widow, but I'm, I don't have a husband. I don't have a, a man to, to protect me and stand up for me and provide for me and pay for a lawyer so I don't get my child stolen. And my daughter, my little girl, is not an orphan, but you've made her halfway there by taking me out of her life. That's not Christian. And that's not legal. And that's why I'm mad, and that's why I hope everybody else will look into... <laughs> even worse stories than mine and it's it's ridiculous but we've got to uh fix things now that we know you can't say oh i had no idea the system was corrupt i had no idea they stole babies i had no idea you could totally cut a parent out of the child's life that's that's considered an adverse childhood experience and there's lots of adverse childhood experiences there's a book called, uh, I think it's How Children Succeed, and it talks in there about protective effects of secure attachments. So I was my daughter's primary attachment figure. I was the stabilizer. I was the protector. I was the one that kind of mitigated whatever's not right in her life. And she actually, she had a, she had a pretty good life, really, um, before all this court stuff. So... Why, why would you, why would you t take from a child? Why would you create a traumatic ev event, an adverse childhood experience that will affect her for life and that removes from her something that enables her to better withstand avoidable adverse experiences? The court-induced trauma is totally avoidable. And I haven't watched Divorce Corp. It's on Netflix. I need to watch it with my brother because I don't have Netflix because I can't afford it. <laughs> but but um, Divorce Court, and it says it is, it's the family court and divorce. It's $50 billion. $50 billion. So people, you know, of course, you know, lawyers thrive off, content, off, off conflict. And some of that's the lawyer's fault. 
and they stir stuff up, but a lot of it's our fault. And, you know, we need to love each other and be kind. And, and, uh, and I do know there's abusive, abusive situations, but m most of the divorces really, their people get their feelings hurt or, um, you know, they just, it's, they don't, they don't live up to their marriage vows. And you know what? That reminds me. If you can't live up to your marriage vow, why do you expect divorce judges to live up to their oaths of office? You know? Just thought about that. But anyway, I missed, oh my gosh, 20 minutes. I'm going to go do my, just my song and try to not mess it up. <laughs>